Now we have not only a filled air cell, so that creates a custom fit, but we have our pads in specific to be conducive to the, the most comfortable movement for this horse within this saddle. I now have my air cell closed, so air no longer comes out. So I have a filled air cell. Okay, from there, I'm gonna put the pad on the horse. That part's nothing to be doing now. Sorry about that, we'll wipe that off. I couldn't get it to work when I wanted it, and then... That works okay. all too well. Yeah, when I saddle a horse, I put everything a little bit further up to begin with. You'll see I'm intentionally uphill. And the reason for that is so that I can slide it back so that I go with the hair of the horse, not against it. Correct. Sometimes we can get it too far back and pull forward, and that goes against the hair of the horse. Okay, I want to snug, pull my pad way up into the tree of the saddle, because again, what I'm trying to do here is create and allow him to have maximum shoulder movement. So now, Jim, come put your hand in here, way back and run it down, and you'll feel the difference in space he has. Yes. Where before we were hitting the edge of that. And Sherry, I'll have you do all this with your horse. Okay? I like to have about an inch of pad in the front, an inch and a half to two in the back. So that would be the correct fit. It follows the shape of the saddle. So hence we measured it and here it is. Uh, then we can saddle up as normal. So if you drop the girth for me, you can figure out what I did over there. That's exactly where I was going. Yeah. <laughs> begun with a filled air cell. I showed you guys that. It sucked in the air, we closed the valves, we had a full air cell. Now we put a little bit of pressure on the pad, both by the saddle and by cinching it down. So the technology of this pad now has the smarts to say, okay, we've got, we need more air up here, but we've got too much air here. Now I say that figuratively, I don't really know. Maybe it needs more air here and it has too much here. The point is we've put a little pressure on it. So now I'm going to open these valves, and it's important to open them at the same time so it releases both sides evenly. And you're going to hear it hiss. Listen for a hiss. So I'm going to let it hiss until it's done hissing. Listen. Hear the air come out? Mm -hmm. Correct. Now I'm going to close the valves back up. Okay? Now if it were me, I'd go do my groundwork, which is going to help that saddle kind of settle in more, loosen up a little bit more. And so in fact, I might have you do that. I might just have you walk them down the lane, bring them back okay. to let that snug saddle settle in some. We'll then snug them up again, let the air out again. And what that has created is a custom fit for this horse's back with the saddle on this given day. Because the nature of air looks kind of good on him too. The nature of air is it's malleable. It's dynamic, right? So if you think about a horse's back, that's great. It's circling back around to he's right where he was. If you think about a horse's back, horses' backs are incredibly dynamic. They're moving, they're flexing, they're changing. Well, the standard saddle is not very dynamic, right? It's fairly static. So it doesn't make much sense, thank you, to put a static saddle, non-movable, with a static pad on a dynamic back, right? So what we've done here is we've taken a pad that now has dynamic characteristics to it. It can flex and move and adjust and change and let that be the, the communication or interim layer between the movable horse's back and typically the less movable saddle. Does that make sense? Uh -huh. So now he's moved around, now obviously not as much, but even that did yeah. cause it to loosen some. Typically we do a little more groundwork. So then I snug him up further. Again, which puts just a little more, I know, friend, puts just a little more pressure on. The key is I want his head straight when we do this. I'm going to open both valves. And in fact, Jim, I'll let you do it. You want to grab both valves at the same time and open them. You're going to hear a hiss. Good. 
very yeah very, very little subtle. but yep definitely. and so that was the pad way of saying we actually want most of this air the air is doing half what we want okay, okay. so now we're on our, our saturn sitting level and our horse has adequate shoulder movement and again now that we're snugged up i want you to put your hand in there and i can run my hand nearly a hand width under that saddle yes okay and you can see that there's now room for that scapula to move okay, okay. so that's the concept of these fair request pads excellent uh, i will send over uh instructions to remind you about the valves because that's that's the technology if you do that in the wrong order it doesn't work well, out if you only open one or side or the other it tends right. to shift it the wrong way right so now when i take it off the last step is that i want to for the purpose of what we're doing here now i won't pull it up on that side I'll just pull it off. Um, then once we're done with our ride and we go to store our pad, it's really important that we then open these valves and store it open so that it's able to fully fill with air again. Oh, okay. Because we want to start fresh to create a custom fit. Every time. Every time, each ride, okay? So they're open, how do you know? You can hear it. You can hear it. And righty tighty, lefty loosey applies for this too, okay? And then when we pull it off the shelf and we go to put it on our horse, we would close the valves so we start with a full air cell and then can make adjustments accordingly. Okay. okay. So there is your shiny new pad. Excellent. I